on the oscilloscope screen are a family of curves from a 2N3904 transistor being displayed by a device called the Judd Williams Curve Tracer. It's a unit that I bought uh, oh, more than 15 years ago from a friend who was getting out of the radio restoration business and was uh, had a a big sale of uh, who's trying to move into smaller smaller quarters so he's getting rid of a lot of stuff and uh, he had told me at the time that this unit was not working uh, but I bought it out of curiosity and uh, kept it around and so I got it out the other day to see if I could fix it and I was able to do so and I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute but first let's take a look at the unit itself here is the front panel of the unit. You'll notice that on the left it has a switch, silicon germanium, and I'll talk about that again in a minute. Then a polarity switch to select between PNP and NPN, a base current selector uh, that determines the, the steps, in other words, the amount of base current per step. Then a switch that selects between the, the left, uh, the right, socket or the probe which is down here in the middle and on the right side is the uh, uh, collector voltage that uh, you can set anywhere from uh, near zero to uh, I think a little over 80 volts uh, collector to emitter voltage and on the far right is the on off switch and the and the power light so uh, the, let's take a look at uh, some of the paperwork that I was able to assemble and manufacture for this unit. Here is an advertisement from the March 1974 uh, edition of Electronic Servicing in which they advertise this as the fastest, easiest, most reliable, least expensive way to test transistors. Uh, well, you may notice if you look at the uh, switch there that it's in the germanium position. And, and one of the things, uh, in a minute I'll tell you what I had to do to get this working, but one of the things that I realized after kind of analyzing the circuit is this thing was actually optimized for or designed for germanium transistors. And then they uh, changed a few voltages and put in this switch so that you could run it on silicon. It shows how long ago this thing was actually designed. I think it was it was designed in the in the 60s. At any rate, the uh, here is basically what you're what you're trying to do with a uh, with a curve tracer. You're stepping the base current, and with each step in the base current you're sweeping the collector voltage from zero to maximum and back to zero again. Now a better way would be if this were a linear trace that that snaps back really fast rather than this but I'll show you in a minute they to save money they they're actually driving this off of an AC uh, signal uh, that is the AC power line <clears throat> but the display then is the collector voltage sweeps the scope across on the x-axis and then the y-axis is the current sent through the uh, transistor and we'll look at that in a second so that each step of this is a trace from zero up to the maximum collector voltage uh, collector to emitter voltage and then back down again you can't really see it but it's actually going up and then sweeping back then the base steps and then it goes up and it comes back and then the the base steps and so on so let's take a look at the uh, uh, first at the uh, manual there is a manual available online and this is a page from it uh, unfortunately it does not have a schematic so I have generated a schematic of the relevant parts of this. I didn't draw out the staircase generator. I will tell you how it works. It runs off a, uh, a unijunction transistor, which if you aren't familiar with those, 
basically uh, capacitor charges and then when it reaches a certain level the uh, the unijunction fires uh, draws the uh, current or the uh, capacitor charge down to zero if you are familiar with 555 timers a unijunction transistor in a little relaxation oscillator with a capacitor works basically the same way or at least it produces the same kind of output that is uh, the capacitor voltage starts at zero, rises to a certain trigger level, and then is shut to ground. And of course, the length of time it takes to do that can be uh, adjusted. What was wrong with this unit was this capacitor had shorted and had taken out this diode along with it. Now, uh, this is actually just a little half-wave power supply and uh, it provides voltage to the staircase generator. So I replaced the capacitor and the diode. Uh, it's, uh, it's now working fine. The 270 ohm resistor did not require replacement. So let's take a look at basically how this thing works. On the left is the AC line with a fuse and a switch, a power a light. Uh, I think this is a neon bulb. Then, uh, not counting the, the part I had to repair, the, uh, there's another winding on the transformer that goes to a bridge that provides a, a signal here. Now understand, this will be a pulsing signal like we saw here, a pulsing DC signal. And that comes to a, a, a what a lot of people would call a crossbar switch. It's just a switch that's wired in a way that in one position this is connected to there and this to there and then in the other position they are switched. In other words this connects to here and this connects over to there. So I've drawn it this way. Uh, there are probably other ways to draw it. Then it goes to a 3.5k potentiometer and that allows you to vary the collector voltage. So with the wiper down at the bottom, you get zero collector to emitter voltage, and with it at the top, you get about 80. Uh, then a, a 1K uh, resistor to uh, limit the current a little bit, and then you notice that it goes to the collector, in this case of the probe, or over if this, the switch is in the position for the right one, then to this collector, left one to this uh, collector. At any rate, whichever one you select, that voltage, the voltage that is set by this pot, is applied to the collector of the transistor. The emitter of the transistor is connected through a 100 ohm resistor to this point. So basically, the uh, current flows from the bottom terminal through the 100 ohm resistor to the emitter, from the emitter to the collector, and from the collector through this 1K resistor back to the top of that, uh, or back to the arm of that pot. Then the base is connected to the staircase generator, which generates uh, a series of base currents, that, as we've seen earlier. So that's how the basic unit works. Now let me uh, show you a couple of peculiarities of this particular unit. Now I'm back on the scope and I have reduced the sensitivity of the x-axis by 2 and now I'm going to turn up the collector to emitter voltage. It's now set at about 20 volts. Uh, and I'm going to turn it on up to there. And what I want to talk about is what's going on right here. You remember earlier I said this unit was primarily designed for germanium and then was uh, probably uh, silicon was added because germanium was being displaced quickly. What's going on here is a modern NPN, this is a 3904, uh, a modern NPN silicon transistor has so much gain and such a high gain bandwidth product and what's happening here is the unit's actually breaking into oscillation. Now, the germanium transistors of the late 60s wouldn't do this. For one thing, their maximum frequency of operation, you were lucky to be able to get uh, uh, 500 uh, kilohertz to a megacycle out of them. 
Modern transistors will, uh, 3904s for example, will go out to tens if not hundreds of megahertz. And sometimes they will oscillate at around 250 megahertz. That is what's going on here. So you'll notice that it's only when I turn the collector voltage up, the collector is set now to what it says on the front panel, 40 volts. Now 40 volts is it would be over here, but uh, as you can see, at that particular bias setting, this transistor breaks into oscillation. So, this is a fun unit to play with. It's a nice little toy, but in reality, it would have to be redesigned a little bit to be useful over a wide range of silicon transistors today. But I thought you might be interested in seeing the uh, the Judd Williams Curve Tracer in action. There's a lot of talk about it on the uh, the various forums online. Uh, but at any rate, this one works probably as well as it ever has at this point, as far as I can tell. But unless this were the circuit were redesigned, it really wouldn't be a useful curve tracer for modern uh, for modern transistors. So once again, hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I. Uh, <laughs> This makes about my fifth or sixth, maybe tenth video on curve tracers of various kinds and signature analyzers and so on. But my recent work with that Syscomp SIG 101 signature analyzer reminded me that I had this old Judd Williams sitting out in the garage. And so I got it out and fixed it and it does work, sort of. Hope that uh, you'll look forward to some more videos, maybe not on curve tracers and also have a very nice day.